with regard to this proceeding, basically there are four elements that I have to uh, receive information regarding. In The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. It was an act of cowardice and it was evil. Brocksterman had only been on the job three days when a bomb exploded. I don't dwell on Paul's death, but it hits you once in a while, just like it would hit any mother. Paul's mom, Peggy, says convicted bomber Timothy McVeigh is getting exactly what he deserves. I wouldn't want to see a dog die, I wouldn't want to see a man die, but him, <laughs> that's fine with me. He needs to die, and I can't wait until he is dead. I look at it differently. You know, this is, this is the man who killed my father. We shall kill no more. We shall kill no more. Killing his wrong. He murdered. Uh, 168 souls. What he did was wrong. So when you do something like that, you should be put to death. And I think what the government is going to do on May 16th is wrong. Eye for an eye, and it's over. <laughs> Timothy McVeigh is dead because of what he did here in Oklahoma City. But in the weeks before and since that execution, the question has been, should he have been executed? Even those with loved ones killed here are divided on that issue. Today, a look at both sides. Two accounts of this notorious execution from two Kansans with loved ones killed here. On the one hand, a man speaking out against killing his father's killer. And on the other, a woman fighting for the right to watch that execution. A woman who, as you're about to find out, will eventually get her wish. There's a lingering sadness here that will always be here. And I think people feel it when they come here. It's kind of like looking at the chairs, kind of look at the souls of the people. You just look at all of them and you think, this idiot wanted a body count and he got it. Uh, my name's Peggy uh, Joanne Godby Brockstroman. And uh, Paul was my son. I don't dwell on Paul's death, but it hits you once in a while, just like it would hit any mother, you know. When you called that day, I just knew that he'd gone out for coffee, or, you know, he, had, he was late for work. Uh -huh. I didn't dream that he'd be See, down at the bottom. You know, I started watching it on TV, and I told him at work, I said, I got to go home and check this out. And then I called up Audrey, and uh, his dad had called me by then and said, Said, well, they can't locate Paul. His office was destroyed. Well, it's just too bad. That's all I gotta say. It's just too bad. Well, that's Paul. Go out with a bang. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, no, I would like to be there. Why? Just to see him go, just to send him off to hell where he belongs. I just thought naturally I would go because Paul was being one of the people that he was convicted for, but um, they're just not making it that way. My daughter wants to call him and say that she thought it would be only fair. Well, I'm sure the other 200 and some that want to go feel the same way. But I, don't, I wouldn't want to see a dog die, I wouldn't want to see a man die, but him, <laughs> that's fine with me just something else we don't need in this world of ours. No, I, I will never support the death penalty. It's hard to explain to, to my son, uh, which I haven't done yet, and I won't for years until it comes up, that you don't take life, that it's wrong to take a life. You don't, it's not something that we gave. It's not something that we can take away. But we're gonna kill this guy because of what he did, and that's okay, because it's not okay. I, I'm, I'm a little scared about, about seeing this because, because of what they've said about it and the, and the tour and 
They said it is very dramatic. One big happy family. One big happy family. <laughs> Welcome to the museum. Uh, this is uh, April the 19th, 1995. Uh, they like any other day. You just go at your own pace. You just go through here where you'll see. In fact, the positioning of his office, they say the, park, the truck was in between the second and third pillars. And then his office was on the seventh floor directly above, just where you saw the, the cave-in part of the building. Uh, we went to Easter church service in Edmond, and then me and my mom and my dad went in up to his office, which was on the seventh floor. I don't think anybody's ready to hear that tape. After my father was killed, uh, I had I had as much rage and as much anger as I suppose anybody could have had. But uh, I was uh, I am guided by what I was taught by my father, by my mother, um, and being raised in the Catholic Church to believe that that uh, you know thou shalt not kill. Seven, uh, C13. I would love to prevent what's going to happen uh, on May 16th, but nothing's going to stop it. I don't oppose the death penalty until he can sit and rot in prison for the rest of his life. I oppose it because it's wrong. There you go. Thank you very much, ma'am. It is the taking of another human life. And I think enough lives have been taken. I understand the people that feel differently, uh, but I hope those people that, that really want him executed and want him put to death will really think about the pain and when does it stop. Today is April 19th, a year 2001, and it's been six years since the bombing in Oklahoma. I think that's to this day, if I can reflect back, I don't have this feeling like, Oklahoma City. Yeah. I don't ever want to go back there. Right. I have this feeling of like, wow, what a great place to go, and that memorial just reflects, it reflects everything. This is the way we all decided to spend it, just all be together. This one is, uh, to me, very important because it is close to the execution. It's just like uh, finally there would be, you know, a, an end to something, a, a complete to something, you know, a complete circle. I don't think I'll be horrified. Um, relief, yes, definitely relief. I don't want him breathing the same air as, as I'm breathing. I don't want him. I don't want him on this planet. Well, it's the eye for the eye, and you know, tooth for a tooth, or whatever this, it is. I just want to see him gone. If if my mom is asked to go, you know, or my father is, I will go to Terre Haute. Obviously, I won't be able to be at the execution, but I, I want to be there for support. Tim McVeigh will be executed in Indiana on the 16th of next month. And today, 10 people from Oklahoma City were selected in a lottery to be witnesses. 10 witnesses will be seated just outside the execution chamber. Seven family members of those who died in the blast, two of those wounded and another survivor. The identities of those witnesses has not been disclosed. Did you know they've chosen? They've chosen the eight people. Who are you talking to? Penny from the Oklahoman. Apparently not. Excuse me. I was called yesterday uh, by one of the Justice Department and that I have been chosen, and I'm just very, very excited about it. And they said they are not publishing the names. Uh, but if I wanted to contact anyone to see if they're going, that was up to me. Right. So I emailed a friend of mine. Her brother was killed in the bombing, and we've been very close since um, the trials. And she was chosen, too. And so she's going to represent her brother, and I'm representing Paul, and we're going to watch that son of a gun go together. And we're both very happy being chosen. So I'm telling my family this afternoon. So have they picked the eighth? I guess they have. And? Do you know if you're one? Did, did she know? No, no, they will not tell the press. 
You know, what are you up to? What's going on? What is suspicion is running right I don't know. There's room. like, you know, okay, you're going to issue a family trust here. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Yes, I've been, yes, 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 yeah, I've been chosen. I knew it. Yes, have I you? have been chosen. Yes, Did yes, yes, you? yes, 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 because I don't know if it's right or not to say that, but yes, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. The day's coming closer, and I'm very happy I get to be there. Looks like we're going to Terre Haute. Okay. Here, we'll try this. Do both of these, and then you can be all done. Yes, sir. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Okay, let's do this one. Okay. Now look at this one. Very good. Okay, and how many how many guitars are there? One, two. Okay, find something over here that has two. And the last one? One, two, three, four, five. Very good. Sam? I'll be back later, guys. You're but where's he at now? In heaven. Mm -hmm. Is he happy? Yeah. Yep, does he yeah. watch you? Mm -hmm. Yep, does he take care of you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I testified in the trial that I was always afraid of the day my son asked me why my why his grandfather died. And that day happened last week. It was in passing, and he didn't stay with it. He just asked why he wasn't here. And uh, I cried my eyes out. There was a, um, a part in the book where McVeigh described leaving Oklahoma, uh, making an attempt to get back to Kansas. On the way, he had passed a red car that he said must have been going about 110 miles an hour towards Oklahoma City. And I found that kind of interesting um, because at about the same time, I was heading to Oklahoma City uh, in my little red car. And I had always commented to my friends I had to be doing about 110 miles an hour. I've kept everything uh, that I possibly could, all the newspapers, the magazines, um, letters from uh, political figures, friends, the wonderful letters from kids uh, literally all over the world. Um, and this book is just another, another chapter in this, uh, in this horrible event. Uh, I keep them so my son will have them. Killing is wrong. What he did was wrong. Um, and I think what the government is going to do on May 16th is wrong. From NBC News, this is the news with Brian Williams. Good evening. There has been a major development in the case of Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh. And tonight... I have made a decision to postpone the execution of Timothy McVeigh for one month from this day so that the execution would occur on June the 11th, 2001. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I pray, I just pray that Tim McVeigh is saved. My name is Harold Smith. I'm from Albany, New York. Um, I think it's gotten to the point where I'm here to pray for Tim um, and to let the young people see uh, what an adult feels about this entire situation. No one likes what that man did. I mean, it was the most atrocious, one of the most horrible crimes we've ever witnessed in history. But that's why I'm here to help them understand that there's a better legacy for the 168 that died than anger and death. It can be forgiveness and love. Anyway, I hope I have enough heart left in me to stay here until 7 a.m. tomorrow. This will be the final morning call to turn Well, we're in, in uh, Indianapolis. <laughs> Listen, I really don't know anything right now. I am just completely, I'm not nervous, but I'm just sort of anxious to get it over with. He's dying awfully easy is all I got to say. When, when you think compared to the way like my father died, my sister died of cancer, you know, in agony, and then he's just going just peacefully to sleep. It just doesn't seem fair.
I think most people are here to try to uh, just make the statement that not everybody is in favor of the government uh, killing killers. Why don't you understand that uh, you're yeah, going to turn, turn around? Yeah, I'll turn around sure. somewhere down in here. Yeah. And we've just had such a such a large traffic problem. No problem. Okay. We just don't want to risk with all the extra confusion. Sure. Sure. That's fine. Uh, I think we're going to end up walking back and then uh, going to gather at a park and then uh, talk and pray and vigil the rest of the evening until about. Right. Uh, about four o'clock, I think most people are going to come out then and do the final vigil out here. We well, we are we're taking in my name or on my behalf. There's a lot of people in high places trying to get this railroaded through. I don't think it's right to, you know, tell somebody that it's wrong to kill somebody and then turn around and kill somebody. I'm hoping those people over there see this, because they're protesting the inevitable. He's going to die. I wish they would bring him right over here. I would have a public debate with any one of them at any given time. I'm really excited. I just can't wait till he is gone. He needs to die, and I can't wait until he is dead. We're here to represent and uh, clear the record for God that God is definitely pro-death penalty. He will rot, and I cannot wait. It just seems like this situation brings out the worst in everybody. You know, people people say that they have a cause or opinions, but they only want to voice them if the camera's on. He's getting strapped to the gurney right now. He's getting ready for his three shots that he will receive. His first shot will be a Valium, his second shot will be a shot that stops his breathing, and then the third shot will be a shot to stop his heart. This is great, you don't even know. We've been staying out here for 16 hours, it's about time. all of the witnesses from all of the different groups. He looked around from left to right, and he nodded with a sense of, OK, satisfaction, resignation, who knows? He didn't say a thing. Uh, we all got into the witness room, and um, we all waited very patiently. We were all very anxious for it to be over with, and we were very happy. And uh, when they opened the curtain, you know, he took time to look at each window, and he could not see us, but we saw him. And we just held the pictures up to the window. He couldn't see them, but uh, they could see him. He went to, to sleep very quietly, and uh, which upset a lot of us. We would like to have seen him go out a little bit worse than that. But uh, he did go out, and uh, it's, he's gone. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a very sad day. Um, it, was a, it was a sleepless night, followed by a very sad occurrence. He's gone. And, and I feel very good about that, so does the family. I couldn't disagree more. It's still a human being. It was just wonderful. So today, uh, today is a very sad day. Uh, I grieve for the loss of my father. Um, I, I ache for him, and I always will. He died very peacefully, and like I said, it's, it's a shame. And, and today, I, I, had, uh, I had one more life to that for which I grieve. Is this an exclamation point on uh, a bad chapter of your life? <laughs> very good, very well put, yes. Um, yes. So yeah, I think I think the death penalty certain certainly uh, uh, makes the uh, the pain go on. I'm going to wake up tomorrow feeling it's good. It's a good day. It's over. That chapter's closed. Uh, he's closed. He's gone. I just thank God that I was chosen. The cloud has risen from our heads, and uh, we're going to continue on great. Back here in Oklahoma City, not much has changed since the execution. Today, they're demolishing another building that was damaged in the blast six years ago. People like Peggy Broxton would, would tell you the greatest change that's happened since is that now when she speaks of Tim McVeigh, she can do it in the past tense. People like Todd McCarthy would tell you that's not a good thing. I'm Jeremy Hubbard. Thanks for joining.